whenever you're ready to start. All right. Welcome everyone. My name is Dylan. My name is Sean. My name is Mary Kate. <coughs> I'm Emma. Michael. And today we're going to give you guys some uh, some tips on how to build green. So let's imagine for a minute that you guys are all CEOs of your own company, and you and your executive board are deciding to build a new headquarters. And you guys are deciding between going with the standardized way of building things or trying to go green. And in the next couple minutes, we're going to teach you guys 10 rules on how to go green. So the advantages of going green. Uh, starting in the early 2000s, companies started to dis started to look at going green in different ways, but they didn't know much about it. So at the time, they knew that it conserved natural resources. So you weren't using fossil fuels as much. You were going towards geothermal technology. Um, you were minimizing on-site trading. So actually taking, so starting to build a foundation for a building wasn't taking as long. You're using alternative materials. So a lot of times in standardized buildings, you're using toxic materials such as formaldehyde. Um, in going in green building, you take these out of the out of the equation. And after everything's done, after you've constructed your building, all the recycled, all the materials recycled and reused for different projects. So this is what we knew in 2000. And nowadays we know that overall we're lowering utility costs. Um, one in, one particular company is Gensine Corporation in Massachusetts, and their utility costs drop 42 percent in energy and 34 percent in water alone in one year. There's a greater employee productivity because employees are happy to work there because they feel like their carbon footprint is less. So this company, Genzyme, had a 15% boost in employee productivity in their first year after their green building was built. Less absenteeism as well is seen, and that's because of the alternative materials used in the building process. Because we don't have the formaldehyde or other toxins that are used in the, in the walls and stuff, that people aren't getting as sick and the cleaner buildings as well. And there's a stronger attraction and retention of workers. Like I said before, people enjoy it. People like having a smaller carbon footprint. So so people, so employees want to work there and um, overall the atmosphere of the building is much better. So why build green? Building, is no, building green is no longer as pricey as it used to be. Although it is 40% uh, Greater is more expensive in the beginning to build green. Over the, after the next, after the first year, you'll see your gains. You'll see your money come back to you because your utility costs will go down by about forty percent. It's becoming a necessity as well because there are organizations around the country that have started up, such as LEED, um, which is an organization called Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, which has a point system that rewards companies for being green. So there's no longer an excuse to avoid environmental and economic sustainability. And any company can follow these 10 rules that we have um, to, on a standard budget to go green. So the first one is rule number one, focus on the big picture. So you want to hire the right project team. And you want to invest a lot of time into this because these are the people who are going to build this building for you the right way and save you money in the long term. So you want to hire the right architects, the right engineers, contractors, and consultants. They have to be knowledgeable, and they have to know what they're talking about. So you have to really take the time in these steps, in these first few steps, to get the right team together in order to complete every step in the following. Rule number two is choose a sustainable site. Now, the ideal locations aren't what you would think. Um, you want to choose areas like parking lots or, or vacant lots, uh, redevelopment sites like rail yards, places where people aren't usually looking to build something. Remediated brownfields is another example. And these are all ways you can gain points with the lead, which is the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design Committee. Uh, if you build on something on these types of lots, they will give you points for it because you're remaking like a, a vacant place into something that's actually useful. So you can also gain points with the lead by uh, being a quarter mile from a bus line or a half a mile from a rail and subway line. And this is because you're trying to reduce the amount of people who are driving to your work um, with their own individual cars and trying to use mass transit. So you want to turn these challenges into opportunities like the Genzyme Center did. Genzyme Center uh, also decided to gain points with lead by putting in a geothermal heating and cooling uh, system, which actually reduced their utility costs by about 50%. Uh, rule number three, do the math. To effectively plan for a green building, 
you must apply a cost effect uh, cost analysis to each component before advocating plumbing. And uh, what this means is basically choosing between, for example, a green roof and a standard roof. Now, a green roof initially is going to cost more, but in the long term, it'll last longer and has more benefits such as storm water management and lower energy costs. Now there's many soft, there's a lot of proprietary software out there that can help with this process. For example, DPR Construction utilized a software called Ecologix, which allowed them to weigh each lead rating requirement with their $6.2 million uh, budget. And what they came up with was about $85,000 that they would use towards upfront green spending on architecture and engineering. Now, cost-benefit analysis can also be used to weigh the benefits of going green. Now, there's certain tax incentives, tax breaks uh, that cities, cities, uh, cities, states, and utility companies provide to um, companies that are deciding to go green. Uh, for example, in Chicago, uh, they award floor area density bonuses to downtown buildings that decide to go green and use a green roof. And in New York, the Green Building Tax Credit gives deductions on companies that uh, utilize certain sustainable uh, exercises. And all of this cost benefit analysis is really to help kind of know where you stand financially and environmentally. Now, uh, rule four, make the site plan work for you. Um, site planning allows you to minimize uh, the amount of on-site infrastructure, such as parking lots and buildings, as well as limit erosion limit grade work and earth work, as well as provide easy access to public transportation. And all of this earns lead points, uh, lowers construction costs, and reduces facility and infrastructure footprint. And now, <coughs> sorry. Uh, for example, IB, IBM Tivoli Systems dedicated 70% of their 90-acre compound, which is 63 acres, to just pure open space. And what this allowed for was more room to utilize uh, utilize building orientation. And what building orientation does is, for example, in a poorly uh, oriented building, you can have 100% artificial lighting, which takes up 20 to 25% of your direct energy costs, because not only are you paying for lighting the building, but you're also paying for uh, air conditioning because the lights give off heat. So if you orient a building uh, correctly, you can utilize daylight and uh, spend less money on artificial lighting. Another example is this, if you live in a windy or breezy area, you can put vents in the building, which will have a cross ventilation to keep a cooler area, all of which will help short-term and long-term payments. Actually in the shape of a circle, so 
every part of the 20,000 square foot building actually reached natural light at some point of it. And in the daytime, artificial light was not used 90% of the time, which is amazing for that, and 55% um, less energy was used than a normal building. Rule seven is taking advantage of technology. So it's really important for green building technologies to help conserve and generate energy. So there's two ways that companies can do that. Um, companies can install motion sensitive lighting sensors in individual climate controls and work areas. And secondly, companies can use HVAC. So light and air conditioning are two forms of technology that are very capable of consuming. Um, although it's more expensive to get higher forms of and more efficient HVA systems, um, overall you are saving energy over the long run. And secondly, green facilities can produce their own technologies um, by inventing things on their own. So a major example of this is the Supercenter Walmart in Aurora, Colorado um, established their own wind turbine, which is a device that um, transfers kinetic energy from the wind into electrical power, and secondly, they had a gas, natural gas micro turbine which used nat natural gas um, for their engines. So these are two ways um, to benefit going green with technology. And secondly, um, is saving and managing water. So also water is a huge way to go green. Um, so as water becomes more expensive and more scarce, firms really need to focus on conservation. And a way they can do that is installing water conservation systems. So a few examples of these are waterless urinals, um, using recycled water, and drought tolerant landscape plants, which are all fairly self-explanatory. And um, a second point is that many jurisdictions have stormwater management regulations. So they are um, addressing the problem by satisfying the limit of the risk of flooding. So they're um, maintaining the, how much water is entering the area. So to address this problem, you can um, use these forms of regulations. So another example from Walmart is that they have a two 400 foot long trees that shade bias walls, which are like rain canals, and this helps them slow, this helps slow down the rain flow and rain off. Um, so overall, both technology and water are very powerful factors to stay green. So rule nine is use alternative materials. And first, it's uh, many uh, sustainable materials, uh, non-toxic, or many types of sustainable non-toxic building materials are now readily available. So at the same price as a normal couch or a normal, actually, steel is now easily uh, a renewable resource and you can get it uh, recycled materials for just the same price as the standard uh, model right now. So most companies don't realize that, and that's why they're not really uh, going into, they're really uh, against going green so far. But if they were to know that you can use these renewable resources, it would be a lot easier. Uh, as part of this is, with all these uh, alternative materials, 23% of office workers experience sick building syndrome, which means the building actually makes them sick at some point. It's part of the, uh, some of the side effects are like nausea, uh, dizziness, and uh, eye, no eye, nose, and throat irritation. It's actually really bad. And green buildings, with all the uh, with all the alternative materials that they use and uh, the better air quality that they have, they reduce that and they uh, actually lower it by 20 to 50 percent in uh, certain buildings. So they've done a study, and it's shown that it reduces it by that much. So rule 10 is construct green. And there are several benefits to this. Uh, building green starts during the construction process. So like we said earlier, you need to find an area that is not being used, like an old parking garage and everything, and try and build on top of that. So you take down the entire uh, parking garage and uh, use that area. To do, after, when you start doing that, and start building there, you need to focus on the air quality right away. Because one of the biggest problems most buildings find is that they can't control their air quality and then mold and uh, 
decay starts really early and the building has issues very early with air quality. That doesn't happen with green buildings. They focus on making the air quality uh, as best as it can be first and foremost. So then they move on to recycling the construction waste. They use all the concrete from the uh, parking structure that they used to, that the site is being built on. And it, doing so avoids using going to landfills, uh, using that time to transport uh, the waste there. You just reuse it, you save money, you save time with it. Next, uh, it's generally che it's much cheaper. And uh, using old concrete saves the money and time. And finally with this, you gain lead points. If you recycle more than 50% of your construction materials, you gain a ton of lead points and it's uh, very helpful. So I know we've gone over a lot today, but here are the three uh, main points that we want you guys to remember. Uh, building green is no longer as pricey as it was. It's cheaper, it's about the same price to build a green building as it is to build a normal standard building right now. Uh, it's very, it conserves energy and water much more efficiently as we've said. Uh, most green buildings work on a system where when you leave a room and there's no activity in that room for a minute or two, the lights shut off on their own. That's how my entire high school worked and it, they saved uh, thousands of dollars a week just because of that. Uh, and green buildings, lower SBS, it's a better, it's improved, it's an improved work environment for all employees. They have better air quality, they're not getting sick as often. Um, part of it is also cold and flus are knocked down from nine to, t uh, nine to 20% as well in green buildings. So it's really great, it's a really great way to go. And I hope after this presentation, we all hope that uh, now, if you guys start your own company, you'll decide to go green. Thank you.